Welcome back to Mortuary Mayhem, a podcast by funeral service professionals for funeral service professionals, where any day above ground is a good one. <laughs> how you doing? Good. How have you been? I'm doing well. Good, good. Survived. Yep. <laughs> Very well. How are you surviving this heat? I hate it. <laughs> I absolutely, I can't. I could not deal with anything above 60 degrees my house. So I've been kind of like camping out on my porch up to this point. I, but I expanded my deck. Mm-hmm. It's beautiful. Me and the dog have it come inside. And all of a sudden the heat wave hit. And I'm like, I haven't, I'm not going outside. <laughs> like I, just, yeah, I'm, I'm not, not built for this heat. I, <laughs> I am not. I am not a, I am not that I want the dead of winter either, but. I'll take I'm, winter. But no, I'll take winter too. I'm just not going to take the dead of it, but it's, you know, right. I mean, I have no problem. Uh, I have no problem staying cold. <laughs> yeah, no, I'll take almost anything. Uh, no, not almost. I will take anything over the heat. <laughs> Rain, just, snow, yeah. ice, oh. any of it. <laughs> oh, how hot is it out there right now? It's a, it it been, is, let me see, uh, 77 right now, Okay. high of 86. Okay, yeah, it's in the 80s here. <laughs> it was the last couple of days I was, like, I got to my truck and it said 108 on my dashboard. I'm sick. I can't, I just can't. There was three days in a row that it was in the hundreds here. I just, Awful. I Awful. just can't uh, even try to see the fireworks. I, I think, what is it? It must be, it's the heat, I think, coming up from the Texas. Oh, that makes sense. Fires. Yeah. And then, the, yeah. Yeah. But it's, but like, even off my deck, you can normally see the fireworks and you could see them into like the smoke, which was kind oh, of, my gosh, yeah. Aura, but yeah, it was like, oh, I can't. How's the smoke from Canada been over your way? Bad. Pretty bad. bad. Yeah. Yeah. I think yeah, we got hit between. Between Texas and Canada, I don't know which one's worse right now, but yeah, they, yeah. Uh, uh, I can't. <laughs> I know it's so bad. I'm done with this. <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> I don't know. Well, I think the first question of the day. <laughs> so, you are the you're a faculty member at the Pittsburgh Institute of Mortuary Science. Yep. What else can you tell us about? Ooh, Miss Chelsea Cushes. <laughs> so I, um, as far as my background, I uh, was in grad school. I was um, working on my master's in environmental science, and we were talking about like green burial and alkaline hydrolysis, all these like alternative burial methods. Kind of sent me down the funeral service rabbit hole. Um, I, I kind of thought everything was still like really traditional, and in a lot of places it is, but I thought that it was that way everywhere. Um, and I was really interested in that. So I, I did finish my master's degree. Uh, and then like a year later, I went to tour uh, PIMS and I signed up for classes that day. And the more I learned, the more I loved it. Um, and then that was, I graduated in 2017. Uh, I moved up to the Detroit area, just south of Detroit. Um, got my Michigan license, worked there for about five years. And then I moved I commuted back and forth every week uh, for about a year, and then I got full time at PIMS. Yeah, that was a that was a fun time. Um, and then I got full time at PIMS, moved to Pittsburgh full time, and uh, yeah, here I am. <laughs> that is a long commute. Yes, it how, was. <laughs> how long was hours. that taken? A four, four hour hours. drive. Four hour drive. Yeah. Oh yeah. Wow. I would always drive because I would have my dog with me. So okay. it was, and it's all turnpike. It's a really easy drive, but I okay. mean, it does get to be a lot every week, you know? <laughs> yeah, that is a, wow, that is a long drive. Yeah. <laughs> Oof. No, thank you. <laughs> no, thank you. Don't, don't sign me up for that. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I wouldn't do it again, but. <laughs> no. well, that's, that's, that's dedication and commitment, yeah. to, you know, to say the least. It worked out, you know? <laughs> yeah. 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 I mean. So you, so you were just green burial and all of that just got really got you interested and you jumped right in. Are you st- you're still passionate about the green burial and all of that? I never got super into it. I um, I mean, it's not you know, it's not such a big thing over here. It's more of a popular thing out west. Not to say that green burial is not a thing at all, um, but it's not super common here. Um, I don't know what it's like in your area. I don't know if it's like really. I think it really depends. Yeah, like Western Mass, Virgi- um, Vermont area, you know, you're going to see a lot more of it uh, mm-hmm. just because you have that, I'm going to say wooded areas, you know, you have people <laughs> that are attracted more to environment, uh, therefore environmentally friendly. Uh, I think we have a lot of people that are environmentally 
that they're looking for the environmental burial options mm-hmm. around here, but they're just not offered. So they yeah. don't, they're going to conform to society of saying, Hey, I'm just going to grab whatever is yeah. offered and I'm going to jump with it. So sure. they do that, but I would love to see that. I would love to see more options. I know I had a yeah. cemetery out this way consult with us for a green section of mm-hmm. their town or city cemetery, town cemetery. Yeah. Um, I mean, we have a pretty big yeah. green national cemetery here. Um, it, pretty close. It's in Verona, Pennsylvania. Okay. Um, so that was, but I mean, yeah, the further I got into school and then moving up to, um, you know, I was, the funeral home I worked at was in Flat Rock, Michigan. It, it's a small town. Um, but they did offer a lot of options. Uh, green burial really was not one of them. Um, so I really never never pursued that part of the industry even though that's why I got in it yeah. so <laughs> but never say never <laughs> no I mean I think it's something that's slowly penetrating the east I mean I think I know I know like Vermont is all over that and I know there's bills in I know Massachusetts I believe Rhode Island as well you know so I mean I would hope I would I would love to see all those options come this way I think it's just a matter of time I think like anything else I think people are scared of change and you yeah. know, I mean, like anything our else. Industry, I mean, yeah. It's so slow moving too. like any changes in our industry. It's like, oh, yeah. it's years and years. So. Oh yeah. 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 <laughs> you know, and I mean, like anything else, I mean, people have an established business that is geared towards whatever they're doing. Mm-hmm. So I think that there's going to be, well, is, you know, if I bring this out there, is there going to be a market for, it? I hope there is, but is there right. going to be a market for this? Am I going to be able to turn my families over to this or are we going to basically shut our doors or you know, what is there? I mean, it's business. It's, you know, like yeah. anything else, but you know, I think, I think if you bring it, I think the people are all over that. I think that they'll, yeah, you know, absolutely. Yeah. I think it's know. definitely headed in that direction. Um, yeah. but we'll see slowly, but surely. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I don't know what you're seeing out, out in your way, but I mean, I, I think a lot of what we see in this way is perception. Yeah. Oh yeah. You know, it's, you know, when you're dealing with the general public, I mean, how many people come into a funeral home and they're like, this is what I want because this is what mom had. This is what dad had. And you're like, but that doesn't make sense because dad was Catholic and mom was Protestant and right. we're not doing that. <laughs> but it's, you know, there's the religion doesn't even match up. Like, you know, yeah. what do you, you know, or yeah. I think, and you, you know, know, people you don't know. understand what their options are either. Like, I right. think if people are just very unaware um, of this industry and everything that yeah. goes along with it. So it's, I mean, it's tough. You got to put options out there for people and then, yeah. you know, explain them. And yeah, it's, you know, how it goes. <laughs> oh yeah. And it's, I think a lot of it's just education. I mean, if we, mm-hmm. if we educate the people, that's, that's the biggest part of our job, but do we always have that, you know, a person comes and goes, Nope, this is what I want. I know more than you do, even though you went to school for this and you do this every day, right. I somehow, you know, and I'm not downgrading the families, but that is the perception that we're going to see is I, they came in there determined. This is what I want because this is what all my relatives have had. Um, yeah. How, I mean, I think that's the question for us as embalmers. I mean, I know you're on the embalming side of the house as, mm-hmm. as I am, you know, mm-hmm. but for the funeral directors that are sitting with the families, how do we educate them? That's, you know, I mean, we're educators. Yeah. So, you know, like, how do we, how do, how do we do that? How do we, it's tough. It is. Yeah. Know? I think when, the younger generation starts to make more of the arrangements too. I think things will change with that. Mm -hmm. Um, But right now I think it is still a lot of kind of traditional, especially in this area. um, Mm -hmm. A lot of just traditional, you know, one day visitation, next day church service Mm -hmm. kind of stuff. So, which is okay. It's not, you know, everybody has their preference. Yeah. And I'm sure you're seeing the same thing. We're out here where people are getting away from visitations and they're just going more to direct, direct dispositions. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you know, I mean, it's, I have my, I have my take on if that's <laughs> good or bad, but yeah. Oh know, yeah. I think you know. we need to be able to grow with whatever the trends are. And I think, you know, immediate disposition is okay. If you're going to have some kind of service to, you know, I mean, I, I don't like immediate disposition with no service, no ID viewing, nothing. I don't think it right. gives that family a chance to even start grieving properly. So no, and I think, you know, I think there's a lot of changes. I know that there's surveys out there of if remote attendance is, you know, the best thing. And I know, I mean, we have TribuCast that mm-hmm. provides, I mean, an amazing service, um, mm-hmm. you know, to bring people there. So, I mean, even if you're worried about air, oh, well, I got to fly all the families out and I got to do this, you can still have a service because you, we have the technology now. 
right to provide right. that um yeah. but i think a lot of you know like anything else and uh, you know i I see there's a lot of there's a lot of things that are like pet peeves of what people say, you know, where you go out there and they're like, <laughs> you know, and I'm sure I've the same thing, you know, you should remember them the way they were when they were alive. Yeah. And it's like, come on, come right. on, let me do my job, you know, uh, yeah. just let me do my job. And... It's tough because I think then you read into families not fully processing yeah. that that person's gone. I mean, I don't know. I, every family's different, but um, I think we need to bring value back to services maybe not the traditional service but some kind of service yeah because i mean i think that there's you know and i i was in a seminar recently um it was a suicide a post-vention suicide related mm-hmm. training and they're you know they're sitting there on like well this is you know thing and i whoa 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 <laughs> i said you know and they got used to me me, me and my vocalness in the seminar, but they're like, oh, here's the deaf guy, you know, like, all right, Dan, what do you, Dan, Dan what's your take on the matter? But I mean, it was, um, cause you know, you get a lot of people in the more counseling, we have law enforcement there and things like that in their space. Uh, but I said, you know, my take on the matter is, all right, I believe like some, this is a difficult thing. You have like, go with suicide. Mm-hmm. You know, you have a, you have a difficult topic. You have, um, you do have something being treated like a, like a crime scene. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and does the family necessarily want to see that? I mean, any embalmer listening to us right now is going to be like, hell no. Yeah, I don't, absolutely you know, not. Right? Absolutely not. That's, you know, that's, we, you shouldn't see that. And the police are doing the right job. They're they're blocking mm-hmm. off that area, and they're preventing anybody from visually seeing that. Um, but then we also hear that, like, oh, you don't want to see them. It just remember them the way they were. And my thought is, like, well, is that necessarily the best thing? Well, how about we change that wording and get everyone to change that wording too? I don't think it's this way he is right now is not the way you want to remember him, but let's talk to the funeral home and let's see what's possible because let's yep. see if they will allow you to spend time with your loved one. Mm-hmm. And by spending time with your loved one, I mean, for us, we could just have an arm hanging out and, you know, it doesn't mean you're going to see him. It just means that you can see a hand. Exactly. Uh, yeah. And the, big advocate of even if you can't show that person's face can you show a tattoo they had can you show their hand i mean anything i think helps um to just start that grieving process for people oh absolutely just something we can do and i mean and we can put you know i think you know i think it's an understatement of what we can do that people just underestimate you know Mm -hmm. like i Mm -hmm. I can do that i I can do that you know yeah people just don't know about this industry and it's i mean I, i don't know how you educate the general public about it at this point but um i i wish that people had a better understanding of what we do i do as well and i you know and i think i think like anything else it's this is like hard i mean if i think mm-hmm. we were talking about like how to do hip surgery people were like all right i'm all over that how do i get my hip and then they wouldn't right. want a hip surgery after they saw it but right. <laughs> but they're, but they're interested we're yeah. like this is how you you know taxidermy an animal they're like whoa <laughs> But then it's like, all of a sudden, like, this is how I make mom look like mom. Right. <laughs> and it's like, no, right. no, I'm Taking not my doing ears this. Off. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, I'm not doing this. <laughs> it's like, That's like, very what true. Are you people scared of? <laughs> right. What are you people scared of? You know? Like, I know. And then every TV show and movie, not every, but almost every TV show and movie that has anything funeral related is so incorrect. <laughs> like, mm. sitting at home watching it, screaming, like, that's not how it is. <laughs> <laughs> my friends are like okay chelsea like we got it we hear you (laughs) yeah yeah. Yeah, someone once told me they said they said when you you know they said at every cocktail party you're either going to be the life of the of the party or you're going to be the death of the party no pun intended yeah and i'm like (laughs) and my first thing was like i don't know how many cocktail parties that you go to but i (laughs) I don't know the last time i went to a cocktail party but sure (laughs) um but but the reality is i mean it's like everywhere we go and you know yeah oh yeah i usually avoid telling people what I do if it's like strangers I'm like we're gonna wait to open that door I'm like I teach and they assume that it's kids and that's yeah. fine you can yeah. assume that yeah because yeah. I mean as soon as you open your mouth they're like what do you do I'm like oh I'm an embalmer oh they must be dying to get in it's like right. oh never heard that one before you hang them um, upside down and drain their blood <laughs> yeah what do you think let's let's really think about this 
<laughs> yeah, like, no, 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 no. Nobody's hanging from my meat hook today. This is not appropriate, no. Yeah, um, that's what I do in my basement, not at the funeral home. <laughs> <laughs> they uh, do, 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 do. <laughs> <laughs> but they had um but no they do they yeah it's like it's like oh like you know they're dying to get in and it's like wow okay yeah no 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 yeah wow you're the first one to tell me that you know or, right yeah you know or they're gonna that. ask you yeah never heard that or they're gonna ask you those questions like does the hair grow do they really sit up does the nails yeah. grow yeah you know do they make noises you're right no. and then of course <laughs> you're making that you know yeah i always love that yeah. <laughs> like, never in the... history <laughs> like... no no no, you have the dinner conversation and you're like talking to this guy right next to you and he's like, his, wow, that's cool. And they got all these questions. Then you look over and you realize the other 26 people at the dinner table are looking at you like, seriously, yep. mm-hmm. like seriously, mm-hmm. why are we having this conversation right now? Yeah. It's, it's like, the worst. I'm like, they asked. I swear they asked. I know. I always tell my parents that, you know, they're like, yeah. why does everything with you have to be death related? I'm like, they asked me a question. I answered it. Yeah. I mean, I can't help it. What am I going to say? <laughs> I swear. I just answered the question that they asked me. <laughs> like there's no short answer <laughs> no no there's not no there's definitely not um i mean i mean i think how do we move forward with this too i mean how do we move our profession forward i think is a big question what is the yeah uh you know i don't i think and i don't think we can change this at least not like on an individual basis but it's like anytime something bad happens in our industry the media takes it and runs with it and that's what people know about our industry so I don't know I mean we have as educators some control over that because we know who we're sending into the field and we can train them you know on proper ethics and proper you know embalming skills and and what have you um but at the end of the day the media is always going to take the the blood and the gore and the horror stories and and run with them so um yeah, I think we do our part and hope that we can move things forward as best as we can. Yeah. yeah it's all about the clicks. It's about, you know, it's uh, <laughs> it's all about what's going to get clicks and that's what the media is going to jump on. And, yeah. you know, I mean, I taught up until recently taught the regulatory compliance, the mortuary law class mm-hmm. as well. And, you know, yeah, it's the same thing. Every case you look at, it's like they all have seem to have common denominators. You yeah. know, it's one I see a lot of non-licensure based you know, things you're seeing a lot of people that's like, oh, well, this guy wasn't licensed when he was doing this, or, you know, mm-hmm. this person was not fulfilling what their licensure, or they were cheating the system and stuff. So there's always like that. It's like, well, was the licensed professional or, you know, depending on either, I know there's a topic you, you could get into and again, how, profe- what the word professional means, but yeah. Uh, but, but does the licensed practitioner are they the ones that are becoming an issue? Right. You know, I guess we've had, you know, yes. I mean, we had, we've had the guy that's, you know, (laughs) starting to lose his vision and didn't realize he put a biohazard bag uh, as the trash bag on the corner. I mean, it, it it happens. I mean, is that really, it was real trash. Did it really hurt anybody? No, but it alarmed the public. Sure. Uh, Sure. But you know, yeah. Every time no. the media jumps on this, people don't go, well, he was he licensed? Right. Was he fulfilling no. what he said he was going to do? Did he go to school like everybody else? Right. No, they, the funeral director did this, you yeah. know? They you just know. want the yeah. horror stories. And yeah, I think exactly. the other thing, too, is, is social media. Like, you have yeah. so many people on social media that claim to be part of the industry. Oh, I worked at a funeral home for a week. I opened doors at a funeral home for a week. Right. I, and they're just spewing nonsense on the internet and and people right. take it and run with it and you know that's what gets shared and that's what gets the clicks so it's mm-hmm. that's unfortunate i think working against us in the in our industry right no and exactly and it's i mean i, I think that goes for any profession i mean whether it be healthcare it's like oh well i worked in healthcare i know everything you know and <laughs> you don't you don't yeah you know that's just the reality is um you know maybe you were Maybe you're getting patients water and ice and no, and I'm not saying anything against anybody that does that. Sure. You know, yeah. But does that put you into a patient care role where you understand everything? Probably not um, right. because you went to a lower level degree. And again, I'm not saying anything against that. Right. Those are, those are very fundamental allied health positions, but mm-hmm. does that give you uh, the knowledge base that like a physician or nurse practitioner would have? Probably not. Mm-hmm. Or, you right. know, but so the same thing is like, I worked in funeral service. Right. But do you know, you know, yeah, 
mean, are you licensed? That's right. <laughs> Did you go to school? <laughs> exactly. You know, yeah. but who has who has the who has the most enthusiasm? Those yeah. people. Yeah, they're always know. the loudest in the room. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right. Guess what I saw today? Right. You know, that's because it, you are you're seeing it for the first time, and mm-hmm. you know, yeah. you get excited. I mean, I, we all got excited when we saw something for the first time. Sure. Um, you know, but keeping that, you know, keep. Yeah, that. it's always the the people that are in it for the. Oh, I I get to work with dead people. Uh, the dead yeah. people don't talk, so I like my job. You know, you're not you're not in it for the right reasons, and they're the loudest people in the room every time. Yeah. 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 Well, I always warn my students. I said, "You live the news." Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know. Yep. It's... You, you know, you you hear it on the news. There's a car crash on Route whatever, and all of a sudden, the next next thing you know, your phone's ringing. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. You know. <laughs> or you, or you're like, oh, you know, all of a sudden you hear like someone, someone passed away in this, you know, this area on the news, and it's like, oh, we're gonna get the call because we service that area. Yep. Um, yep. You know, so. Yep. Pay attention to the local news. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. So, you know, I was warned. I know I was warned my students, and I'm sure you do the same. You know, it's, mm-hmm. it's like if you put anything out there, you talk about anything, you never know who's listening to you. Yep. Oh, a thousand percent. I, you know, be careful what you put on social media and be careful how loud you're talking at the bar because yeah. people can hear you and people are watching and people are listening. <laughs> oh yeah. And, uh, oh, absolutely. I, I, when I was, remember a story when I was working with the living, um, you know, I was doing my, my, my health, I was doing my rotations at the hospital <laughs> and, um, by now I talking to one of my professors, um, mm-hmm. you know, this is a long time ago now. Uh, but I was talking to one of my professors and, and he was like, oh, I can't believe this. He goes, this is, you know, this is not right. And I'm like, what's going on? You know, it's friendly, whatever. I said, what's going on? And he says, um, and he goes, there was some nursing. I wasn't not, I was not in nursing, but he <laughs> says there was some nursing students that were, you know, in the hospital cafeteria. They said something as simple as, you know, all right. Um, you know, after lunch, how about, you could you take care of the woman with uh with the heart you take care of the guy with the kidneys and i'll take care of the woman with the liver it was something mm-hmm. bland i mean you're literally in a massive medical center mm-hmm. how many people have a heart problem they all have, <laughs> hopefully they'll have a heart but how many people yeah. have a heart <laughs> issue how many people have kidney right. issues how many people have issues you mm-hmm. know it was such a bland description but the people mm-hmm. behind them in the booth the next booth over call, they saw the college name on their scrubs called the college complained and said they were talking about my mother and they're like how do you know they're talking about they said the woman with the heart they weren't even on the same floor never mind the same area so it's like right. you know yeah yeah, yeah. Just, you got to be overly cautious in this industry you do you, do. Yeah. you absolutely do you do I mean, what do you see as the future of, you know, how do you see funerals, funeral homes changing, you know, not even just for fixing problems, but do we see, do we see changes in this industry? Yeah. I mean, I think it depends on what area you're in because it does vary so much in this country for whatever reason. Um, I mean, even just with like cremation rates from West to East, from North to South, it's so different. Um, But I think as long as we can, I think one of the most dangerous things to say is, well, we've always done it that way. So I think if we can stay away from that notion, no matter what funeral home you're working in, I think you'll be okay. (laughs) You know, I did it this way because my father did it this way because my great grandfather did it this way because, Mm -hmm. you know, and, uh, absolutely. I, it's, it, that is, it's the most dangerous thing you can do because change is, you know, I remember one day it was a, I, there was a funeral director that walked in. He put the the candle at the um, foot end of the casket, mm-hmm. and um, the the owner comes in. He goes, "This is where we do it." Takes the <laughs> takes the candle, puts it at the head end, and and the director takes the candle. He moves it back at the foot end, and they kept they kept doing this right. And he goes, he goes, "We're putting it at the head end because that's how my father did. It. That's how my grand grandfather did. It. That's how my great grandfather did it." Right. The director takes the candle. Now the director was this. He has just like these big, massive hands. Okay, he's the big dude. He goes, just grabs this candle in one hand, the whole the whole base, picks it up, and he goes, "You ever seen a pillow and and hair catch on fire?" Puts it at the foot end. He goes, "No." He goes, "Good." Then leave it at the foot end. <laughs> he goes, and you won't. And he, you know, he had a point. See, the reason yeah. he put it at the foot end was because he had a point over the fire hazard that was present. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, no, absolutely. I'm like, these people that you're, yeah, my great grandfather did it that way. Your great grandfather also probably smoked cigarettes and drank coffee and wore no PPE while embalming. So oh, maybe course. let's rethink, you know? Isn't that <laughs> the way we're all supposed to do it? <laughs> right. That's what I teach my students. <laughs> that's, oh, no, exactly. I mean, that's that's embalming 101 in my class. I mean, that's the first day you learn you learn how to properly eat the sandwich in there. But I mean, yeah, I hand out cigarettes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> You know, it's just certain, yeah, there's certain things you just don't do. Maybe we take it for granted nowadays, but, you know, you, yeah, we just don't yeah. do those. And, right. Um, but, you know, there's, <laughs> I mean, there's so much change. I mean, just think about, you know, we do have some funeral homes that are starting to wear polo shirts on their off days. And, Cause I mean, mm-hmm. that's, that's okay. But the families mm-hmm. understand that they, I think, I think as a business model, mm-hmm. um, I think if we still try to continue catering to 1950, mm-hmm we're going to lose the demographic that we still have people that are looking for that. We still have an older demographic, mm-hmm. but I think the problem is the older demographics that wants that is the ones in the casket. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's another thing that is so dependent on the area you're in and the funeral home that you're at. Like if you're at, you know, Frankie Campbell, you're not wearing a polo shirt, but no. in some places like a family might, we already have such a, a bad reputation for like people always think we want to take their money for no reason and whatever. Mm. So I think in some funeral homes, like wearing a suit, it might promote that oh, kind of reputation. So, I mean, I, yeah, it's, it's, it's so dependent on your area and your funeral home. Oh, absolutely. And you know, and it's, and again, use your mark, you mentioned Frankie Campbell. I mean, mm-hmm. <laughs> you're talking the con- the country's funeral home that has the reputation for what they do. I mean, yeah, I wouldn't expect that either. Um, mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. and I mean, I mean, how many other places shoulder every single casket that comes through their door? Mm-hmm. Um, but if you've seen the price tag, you're paying for something. You honestly Absolutely. are paying for something when you go there. Uh, and that sure is surely not a guy in a polo shirt. Um, yeah. <laughs> but the, but I mean, I think it depends on, you know, your demographic. If you're a small mm-hmm. country fun- funeral home, should you be going for your morning run in dress clothes mm-hmm. should you be mowing mm-hmm. the lawn in dress clothes or your neighbor's going to look and go what a fool yeah. but again if that is the demographic you're serving then yeah you should be you absolutely, absolutely. Should be, you know but yeah. i think we also need to be people um, yeah at some point mm-hmm. as well you know yeah uh, yeah yeah you i know. definitely think some families could see you sitting down in a full suit to make arrangements as almost arrogant in some places right. um so it's all all perception, I guess. It, per, it comes back to the word perception. It does. It comes mm-hmm. back to, you know, how do people are going to perceive you? And, you know, I mean, we can have the tattoo and piercing conversation mm-hmm. as well over, you know, mm-hmm. what is the customer? If the customer yep. is a 90 year old that's burying her husband, then that maybe that's not going to go over well. Maybe we cover him. Yeah. Um, maybe flip him yeah. up. If yep. we're, it, who, who's, who's the one making the decision? It's not the one in the casket. Right. You know, and if they yep. walk in like that, then maybe maybe it is good for us to look like the customer mm-hmm. and go, wow, the person's just like me, you know? Yeah. You know, yeah, maybe I they're going to choose I, the home like that. Absolutely. Yeah, no, I think one of the most important things you can do off the bat with a family is try to find some common ground. Um, I think they're going to open up with you. They're going to tell you more things just just to tell you them than they would if they're kind of uncomfortable and think that you have nothing in common with them. I mean, even just like, oh yeah, you're wearing purple. Mom's favorite color was purple. Okay. So I will ask everybody that works here to wear purple on the day of your service. And you didn't even know that you, you know, were giving me that information. So yeah, yeah, common ground is is important. And if that's tattoos, then I'm going to roll my sleeves up to meet with that family. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, and that's, you know, and again, it's just, yeah, it is. It's, I mean, when you open that door from the parking lot, I mean, mm-hmm. that sets the stage for everything else you're doing. I mean, it's mm-hmm. that family's grieving. Mm-hmm. That's like, that's a, that's a given. Mm-hmm. And when you open that door, it's my condolences. And they're like, wow, this guy, I can't really talk to him. You know, yeah. come with me to the arrangement room, sit down with me and let's have a conversation. Mm-hmm. What was mom's name? What was dad's name? Mm-hmm. 
What yeah. church did they go to? Are we going to have a service there? You know, <laughs> is that really the conversation we want to have of, hey, Mrs. Smith, it's great to see you. I'm sorry we're seeing each other under these circumstances. Can I get you a cup of water? You know, yep. and, you know just it's a it's a. You know, I mean, how often do you go out in the community and you're you're just trying to buy your groceries and you feel like a celebrity in your own community because they're like, <laughs> hey, I know you from somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. I know exactly I where you that... remember me from. Right. <laughs> I remember you too. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, I think that arrangement conference really is the biggest thing that needs to change across our industry. Um, the embalming, I don't think, I mean, a lot of people can be good embalmers. Um, and everybody has their tricks and, you know, things that they like to do differently and every case is different and that's all fine. But if you don't have that ability to connect with the family like that, you're never, you're never going to make great arrangements that really stick with that family. You're really just plugging people into like the three spots that you know how to fill and creating a visitation and funeral arrangement. Yeah. You know, and I mean, and on that note too, I mean, the NFDA has an absolutely amazing, uh, Melissa Luce does an amazing arranger training through the NFDA, uh, which is, I mean, if anybody is interested, just go to, you know, NFDA.org backslash, I think it's, you know, arranger training is after that slash. Um, I mean, it's absolutely amazing on how to, how to be that person and how to, you know, or even just how to arrange your funeral home, Mm -hmm. um, you know, to do that, you know, definitely, you know. Yeah. Yeah. but I mean, even on, on the embalming side, is there, I mean, when somebody comes in, if we're, you know, in the basement, you know, nobody sees us, mm-hmm. uh, you know, is, how, how do we interact? I mean, can, can we provide that, you know, family something or just the, you know, does the director always, the, I think the director should always see the body and they should communicate. And I think that I always tell my students that, you know, if you're the embalmer, that you should be communicating with the funeral director and saying, Hey, this is going to take me an extra day or two, three days. I can do this. I know. I can Absolutely. Do this. Yeah. I mean, you can't, I, you can't walk into an arrangement without having seen the body. I mean, what if that person needs like an oversized casket and then you mm-hmm. have to call the family back and say, Hey, you owe us, you know, 600 more dollars because mom needs an oversized casket or mm-hmm. and now you have to pay for a, a larger vault. You need a larger grave space. I mean, it's like, yeah, you, that's very important to look at your case before you start your arrangement. Oh yeah. Otherwise you're going to make some, a lot of empty promises. And I know, I mean, I've been on both sides. I've been upstairs and downstairs, you know, where mm-hmm. I prior, previously worked. And, mm-hmm. you know, that's the thing too, is if you, all of a sudden the removal hasn't been done, maybe you're signing the paperwork and I haven't seen it. I can't make an empty promise. I can't tell you that we're going to get the funeral done in the, you know, in three days. I'm not going to tell you that, you know, yeah. let's see what I have come in the door before I promise anything. But again, as the embalmer, I always communicated, you know, when I was downstairs, I always mm-hmm. communicated and said, Hey, I'm going to do this, but it's going to take me an extra day or two. Mm-hmm. Please don't do this. Otherwise they're like, Oh yeah, we can do this. And now I look, I look like the guy downstairs. Yeah. Like I can't do this. You know, Oh, yeah. rush it, rush it, rush it. You're not going to get right. the same job done. No. Um, yeah. You know, but we're going to keep our promises. Yeah. And most families I think are more than happy to, wait a day or two to have better results or to have, you know, what they want as opposed to just what you're offering. I mean, yeah, I, I've never had a family say, oh no, we need, you know, like, no, we need it tomorrow. We'd rather have the worst funeral. Like <laughs> they're going to wait, you know? <laughs> right. Right. You know, and I think, you know, and I think that's always a difficult conversation too. If they're like, well, I have family in town or, you know, I really want this on Thursday when can, you know, can you do it? And I mean, I've had conversation of saying you don't want it on Thursday because you're not going to get the priest you want. And sure enough, they get it on Thursday. They don't get the priest they want. And guess who's on the line? It's me, right? Okay. They're yelling at me. I almost got caned into a grave hole, one, uh, into a grave plot one day. Uh, by, <laughs> by the, I really seriously did. <laughs> like, oh my the gosh. Guy, yeah, the guy, the the whole family was mad because the priest did such a horrible job oh, <laughs> that man. that it was my fault, yeah. despite me warning them that you were not going to get the priest you wanted. Uh, yeah. But, you know, with the embalming, I mean, it's the same thing. Are you going to get, you know, you yeah. need, the, no, you need I mean, those results, you know? You need as much time as you need. I mean, it's like that question that I think a lot of students ask when, you know, it's their first term and uh, they're like, how long does it take to embalm? As long as it takes, as long you know, as it I, I mean, I, I can't, I can't answer that. Sometimes it's overnight. It depends on what that case calls for. Yeah. 
Yeah. I, I ask, I'm glad you do, because I ask the exact same question of my students, and that's like, you know, and you get the answers, and then finally you get that student in the back who goes, as long as it takes. I'm like, yes, <laughs> that is the answer. You got um, it. <laughs> you know, that is the answer I'm looking for, because it is. It really, yeah. you know, it is. It's as long as it takes, and, you know, I mean, uh, no, gravity does not bring cavity fluid to the legs. Right. <laughs> no, things are not going to embalm themselves. If you don't see fluid there when you're embalming, it's not there. Um, you I, know, did you take the extra steps? Uh, yeah. It's, you know, or how often have, how often have you heard someone, you know, students call, you know, call you and go, you know, Hey, I'm, you know, I got this trade embalmer and I'm telling my boss, I can, I can do the job. I want to do the job, but they're like, Oh no, they've, we've used this guy for 30 years. We're going to continue using them. And they're like, yeah, that body's mm-hmm. not embalmed. You yeah. Know. Um, yeah. Cause it's, you know, they are in and out in an hour and you know, right. it's not, and that's not to anything against trade embalmers. I worked with a trade embalmer for oh, a I couple of years and he's, either. Yeah. amazing oh, yeah. um but when you're i think there's a difference between an embalmer and a fluid pusher you know if you grab exactly. the same fluid every time you think it's going to take you an hour every time you are not an embalmer <laughs> no you're not you're not yeah. and i think you know i mean i think that there should be regularly you know like that you have to prove yourself every so often know that you're mm-hmm. you're doing it you know because i mean how what you know and that's the other thing too is things may be covered up like oh well this is what it was but we spent time some fixing the problems after the fact and mm-hmm. you know or maybe the fam you know maybe we just didn't see the problems because we were lucky um uh, mm-hmm. you know putting someone in plastics and not having a properly embalmed is not a solution it is right. a it's a mechanism to prevent failure yeah it's a band-aid it's a band-aid it does it's mm-hmm. just a it keeps the clothes clean if something were to fail after you did everything in your power not to have it fail yep uh, yep you know but you know that's just not the it's things that get under my skin. Um, yeah, yeah, I'm with you. <laughs> you know, I'm with you. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, I think that's also the difficult conversation when the family, you know, all of a sudden they're saying they're going, "I want service," mm-hmm. you know, and the funeral director is calling downstairs saying, "Can you do this?" Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm hoping they do. You know, calling down mm-hmm. saying, "Can you do this?" And you're sitting there saying, "It's going to take me some time." How how do we comfortably and i i know there's many days where the director's like can you just come up here and do this because mm-hmm. you know and they knelt down to the widow or the widower and i had a nice conversation mm-hmm. uh because they do worry the worst if you say look your loved one's not in the condition for you to view them right now mm-hmm. oh, oh my goodness what does she look like is it bad how bad is it you know mm-hmm. and it's like that's a very difficult conversation to have it's what we do yeah. but it's the no, difficult we conversation are... You know? Yeah, we're, I think as a culture, very, we're afraid of death. And um, people, I think, jump to the worst conclusions and through no mm-hmm. fault of their own. I think it's just a cultural thing for us. Um, but it, yeah, it can be hard to explain, you know, yeah. it, everything's okay, but we just need another an extra day. <laughs> like, we'll make it work for you. We just need time. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, we're definitely a death denying culture i mean i yeah. know my grandmother's 94 years old still mm-hmm. healthy as a horse uh, mm-hmm. but she talks about you know when her brother passed away when she was say believe eight years old mm-hmm. um you know up on a farm really really remote farm um you know horse and buggy still back in that day and mm-hmm. cars did exist but they they didn't have them um mm-hmm. and you know he um uh, you know, they, they describe, she described, she asked me years later, she described Purge. You know, he was in a, mm-hmm. it's in the middle of the summer. He's in the living room in a casket in their living room, which mm-hmm. is, we all know, we've studied our history as normal uh, yeah. back then. Mm-hmm. And. Which is crazy. I mean. Which is crazy to think about, right. <laughs> yeah. You know, on a farm <laughs> and the whole family is gathering and they're all coming to this house, this farmhouse. Mm-hmm. So my grandmother is on the couch in mm-hmm. the living room mm-hmm. with her now deceased brother in a casket um and think about that that's an eight-year-old laying mm-hmm. on that couch no i've slept on many funeral home couches i've <laughs> guarded the bodies i worked at a funeral home that did jewish uh, mm-hmm. uh so i did have to you know i'm not jewish but i did mm-hmm. they they would pay me to stay sleep overnight and watch the body uh mm-hmm. because that's what the family requested uh a night watch which is awesome so i mean i have no problem doing that but to have an eight-year-old you have to think like oh my goodness we had an eight-year-old sleeping on a couch next to this and this now my grandmother 
years later, decades later, is describing purged to her grandson, you mm-hmm. know, which is plays in screen director and a bomber. So I understand what mm-hmm. that is, but you know, and I'm like, well, and I'm trying to explain to a 90 year old what, why her, you know, why her brother was purging. <laughs> you yeah. Know? Yeah. They're, they're tough uh, conversations you know, to have. Ago. Yeah. Yeah. And you it's know. different for every family. You have to kind of right. try to gauge where their yeah. um, emotional level is at. And yeah. um, not that you ever should, you know, lie to a family, but how much are you going to share with this person? Are they going right. to understand what you're saying or are they too emotional or, you know, mm. it, you, it's every family so different. Oh, absolutely. You know, and I think times have changed. Like even back then, I mean, I asked her, I said, oh, do you have a picture of my great, you know, of my great grandfather? She goes, mm-hmm. oh yeah. She pulls out the Kodak album of <laughs> his funeral of him in a casket. I said, I was hoping to see my grandfather alive. <laughs> I was hoping not to see him in a casket, but, but thanks anyways. Uh, but to her, it didn't phase her to yeah. her. This was normal because at that day and age, that's what you did nowadays. I mean, it's the, it's the fact that we're institutionalizing people and I, that's, you know, that counts for hospitals, nursing homes, you know, mm-hmm. uh, yeah. people don't, they don't see, they don't see their loved one. And the first time they're going to see them is in the funeral home. Yeah. Families aren't um, as close, like no. physically also. So it's right. like, it's harder for people. I think now it's, it's way more common for people to just move to a completely different state. Mm. Um, so it is, you know, you see people sometimes just on FaceTime or sometimes not at all. So it, that's, it's tough. It is. And the cremation has taken place prior to them coming out. Oh, just cremate and we'll, you know, mail it out, mail them to, mail, mail mom to us or, mm-hmm. you know, cremate and we'll get, you know, we'll do the services when we get there. Um, yeah. You know, how do we fill that gap? How do we provide them the time with their loved one? And, mm-hmm. um, you know, so that's always our, our challenge, you know, yeah. and can we do it? Yeah. I mean, our yeah. embalming skills are refrigeration and embalming. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. I mean, and I think a lot of people don't know that that's an option. Yeah. Um, because I, I remember in the funeral home, like when I would make arrangements, sometimes people would be like, well, we have this going on, blah, blah, blah. And I'd be like, well, why don't we just do it in two weekends? And they're like, oh my gosh, will he last that long? I'm like, yeah, he'll, yeah. he'll last that long. Don't worry. Yeah. Say, I'm a good embalmer. <laughs> yeah. I can make that happen. <laughs> It'll be okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's true. But that, but that goes back to one of our previous conversations of the same thing is it's a, it's assumptions, it's perception, but it's assumptions of, mm-hmm. you know, people start filling in the information because the public does assume, well, this is, you know, they assume certain things and they fill in the blank and, you know, and I don't yeah. know if it's, people don't want to ask questions. They don't want the answer. I don't know if it's uh, the it. fact, the fact that they've talked to enough family members and maybe they trust their family members more than they whether or not it's yeah. the truth more than they would a stranger. Yeah. You know. I think people like think that it's a stupid question, but it's like, ask us the questions. Like mm. nobody in the public knows the answer to these questions. Like you're not, it's right. not a stupid question. Just, just ask it. We'll give you an answer. Like Right. Right. And I, <laughs> no, absolutely. Absolutely. And I, I think it's, you know, maybe because they see us on the arrangement side, maybe they see us as the guy, you know, we're the person mm-hmm. that opens the door, brings them in, asks a whole bunch of questions, figures out what the church is, and sends them on their merry way because we mm-hmm. have something else to do. We're our busy people, mm-hmm. you know, so we do that. But, uh, you know, and they don't know who you are, so they're just seeing you as this, and I hate to say it, cold, you know, mm-hmm. seeing this mm-hmm. as this cold um, process, mm-hmm. you know, but they you know, how, how do we provide that information? And I feel like I know a lot of funeral homes do pre-need events mm-hmm. at nursing homes or senior centers or mm-hmm. things. And I think you'll get people that are interested. I think they do get a really good turnout, give people pizza, they come for anything. Yep. Yep. Um, <laughs> right. Donuts. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> but how do we, I think a big question for the industry is how do we reach the people making the arrangements? Because mm-hmm. those are the people, the people that we're targeting, the people that are going to come you know, mm-hmm. we do a survey. We're like, hey, we need the census. Who's over 65 years old? And I'm not saying 65 is <laughs> old here, but, you know, um, I know there's a lot of people that will, that will hate me for that. But, <laughs> but that is the but that is the age that most funeral homes will start to grab. Why? Because it's not that 65 is going to be in the casket. We all know that mm-hmm. at 65 you could be. But mm-hmm. 65 is the age that you're usually burying your parents. And mm-hmm. that's why we're targeting that demographic. But who comes? Yeah. Is it the 65-year-olds coming? No. It's your 70 yeah. to 80 year olds, 90 year olds that are like, oh, maybe I should make mm-hmm. these. Maybe I'll go get some free pizza and, you know, go yeah. to the senior center. 
yeah um make your pre-arrangements you know. i mean it makes everything easier uh for everybody involved yeah so, yeah that you know. was a good idea yeah, yeah your senior center and nursing home are not populated by people making <laughs> arrangements they're populated by the people going to be in the arrangement right um you know yep. so i think a big question for everybody is how do we bring how do we bring in the demographic that's going to make the arrangements when we're the one profession that nobody wants to talk about or doesn't want to really yeah interact with how do we how do we get you in the door and like hey this is information and yeah you know. it's tough and people get upset too when you send out like um yeah. like mail about prearranging and i mean it's yeah. it's a really touchy uh, taboo subject for a lot of people um so it's it's tough <laughs> Well, it's like in the AARP uh, card. Oh my goodness, I'm old. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> my aunt did that. She said that. She goes, they sent me, the funeral home sent me a postcard. You know, it's like, they want my body. <laughs> and I'm like, well, actually they do. But I mean. <laughs> they do. Yeah. They, they want do. your pre-arrangement right now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But it's like, but in reality, I mean, you do want to do your pre-arrangement young. You never know. Yeah. Death does not discriminate. It doesn't no. discriminate, you know. Mm-mm. And um you know, but people aren't thinking of that. They're not thinking of themselves as needing that. And I think mm-hmm. if we put out the social media, who's going to grab it? It's yeah. going to be us. Oh, yeah, cool. Well, I'm watching a funeral thing of my colleague. And yeah. is it the demographic that needs it? No, they'd rather watch something else on TikTok. Trust me. Um, yeah. 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 <laughs> they what... they want the horror stories and that's it. They yeah. don't care about yeah. the day to day. Right. You know? Yeah. So that's, it's tough. It's tough. They want the, they want the true crime. They don't want the, uh, they don't want the clean crime. No. You know, yeah. They don't want the clean information <laughs> that comes from it. Yep. No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, what can you do? You know? Uh, I know. I know. I know. <laughs> I know. I know. But <clears throat> the, um, I mean, what do we, I mean, we, we both teach students mm-hmm. and things like that. I mean, what, what advice do we give to our students? What could we give to our students or even just anybody? I mean, anybody that hasn't become a student yet, like how, how do we, what advice do we give them to, uh, you know, if they're thinking of going to school or if they're thinking about, you know, even if they are currently in school. So one thing that I like to mention to applicants or potential applicants and my colleagues are the same way. Um, we'll tell them like, if you're in this because you think it's like cool to work with dead people, this is not for you. Like go into pathology, become an autopsy tech, go into organ don't procurement. Like it's, it's not funeral service because everything we do is for the living person. Um, so that I think kind of cuts down on like the people who are in it for the wrong reasons. And if you're in it for the right reasons, I think you're going to be a, automatically, you're a much better arranger. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I, that's really my biggest thing. Other than that, I think it's just like building confidence, letting them know it's okay to think outside the box. Um, you know, everything doesn't have to be cookie cutter, traditional service. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah. 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 We're unfortunately, we are not a true crime podcast. Um, right. You know, <laughs> on that. It's just, that's the, that's the reality of it is that mm-hmm. we're, you know, it's, you may be interested in this gruesome gore and we see it we see it come in mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but it's not exciting it's yeah life this is this is someone's loved one we're taking care of mm-hmm. uh, this is th- this is you know this is something with, and i find that I, I find my students that are doing very well are the ones that are interested in like healthcare medicine because they were mm-hmm. like you know they maybe they were interested in surgery with the living or whatnot but maybe they weren't interested in actually getting into living surgery. So this is the embalming side was something where they could practice those skills and mm-hmm. it really is, it's a surgery. It's postmortem surgery, mm-hmm. uh, same instruments, mm-hmm. same procedures, same everything. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, to be able to do that, I mean, we're doing, mm-hmm. I mean, you think someone handed me a paper one day of all the jobs that we do, we all the hats we wear. I thought it was mm-hmm. the coolest thing. It was like double side. It was actually an eight and a half by 11 double sided. And it was like 11 size print. And it literally just word after word. Nobody, I don't think they could fit a comma in there. Yeah, uh, it's, it is crazy. It is, Some days are crazy. <laughs> yeah, it is. But I mean, we're reconstructive surgeons. We're, you know, working the vascular system. We're doing mm-hmm. cosmetics. We could do hair. We can, you know, we're doing, yep. but I mean, I think on the, if that's what you're looking for, I think on the daily basis, I think a lot yeah. of people are, you know, it's, it's just, it's embalming grandma. It's, yeah. That's, you know. Yeah. I mean, trade embalming or working at a funeral home where you are just embalming is such a niche thing. Mm. So to go to school for that and, you know, take all the exams that you have to take and 
do all that under the assumption that you're going to be able to work in a just embalming position, I don't think, I think that's a waste of money. Mm. Um, if you can't make arrangements, I mean, unless you're in a state that has separate licensure where that's maybe more common, I just don't see a point in pursuing a degree for that reason. Yeah. You know, and I know, I know there's, you know, I mean, I know there's employers out there that will do just, they just mm-hmm. want a funeral director or they just want embalmers or they want someone that's both. And, you know, but as you're saying, it's, you know, getting out there, you'd have to be able to find that mm-hmm. job and the chances are, and I always have people, I know we have a lot of students and I'm sure you do too, where they, where they come in with the, well, I just want to embalm or I just want to direct, I want nothing to do with bodies. I just want to direct the funeral. Mm-hmm. Um, I find that those that are embalming don't tend to complain about the funeral directing classes as much. They get through them because whatever, it's clean, sit in a classroom and learn. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But I find the ones that just want a funeral direct are the ones that are going, I don't want anything to do with the body. <laughs> um, and I think the reality, and I, I know I'm in a state in the states that surround, you know, surround me up here are all dual licensure states with the exception of one. And I think even if you are in a single licensure state where you can, for those that are that don't know, it's you know those you you just funeral directing or just embalming mm-hmm. or you could do both. Uh, that doesn't mean like I mean I could walk out the door and I could just embalm for a funeral home even though I have a dual licensure. Mm-hmm. I can hold both licenses, but I can do mm-hmm. just one. So, but I find that it's, yeah, it's those that are want just the funeral directing are the ones that are saying I don't want to do this, and I I always tell them the same thing. I said, you need to get through this when you mm-hmm. get out. If that's what you want to do, you can find a funeral home that will allow that. Mm-hmm. But for today, you need to do this. Just do your 10 cases. Learn how to embalm. Mm-hmm. Um, I said, for one, you need to because it's a dual licensure state and all the states around you are dual licensure. So you need to have both sides of the house because you're going to walk out and you're going to be able to do both whether or not you practice both. Mm-hmm. But this is what I always think about. I always explain to him. I said, if you're the funeral director, and you're the first person there in the morning, and you turn that light switch on, because every good funeral practitioner should turn the lights on, and the first thing you do before you check anything else is that body. Mm-hmm. Because what happens when that when something goes wrong, and things go wrong, things go mm-hmm. very, when things go wrong, they go very, very wrong. Yep. <laughs> very wrong. <laughs> um, so you check that body in that casket, and you go, uh-oh. And then you go down to the prep room and you open that light switch and you look at those bodies and go, "Uh Mm uh-oh, okay? Because the family's coming in and hopefully you got to work early and hopefully you checked those bodies and, you know, you have time to fix it. But what happens when I'm the, just the funeral director and I'm like, I don't know how to deal with the work with a body. Mm -hmm. Hold on, family. Don't come in for an hour. I have an embalmer on their way to fix your mother. That doesn't go over very well um, at all. Uh, So... Yep. You know, it would be nice if you could do minor fixes and you knew what you were doing and you knew what instrument to go get and how it worked. Yeah. Uh, whether or not that that's your primary job, you should be able to fix, you know. Yeah, fix, at least the bare things. minimum to bare minimum. get people right. ready for visitation. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, I don't, in my experience, I have a lot more students who are, I just want to embalm mm. and I don't have very many that are, I only want to arrange. Oh, wow. Yeah. I have a Mm -hmm. mix. I have a mix of those. Mm -hmm. Um, I have a lot more that want to, they want to arrange, but Mm -hmm. you know, and, uh, you know, Mm. that's interesting. Yeah. 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 So it might be a demographic area. Mm -hmm. Uh, I also wonder Mm -hmm. because, you know, think about the Institute. I have a general, I'm at a a community college, whereas you're at a institution that for Mm -hmm. those that don't know is very well known for it's a bombing um (laughs) you know so i mean honestly if i want to be a trade bomber and i wanted to travel you know commute nine hours uh, over Mm -hmm. to where you are um (laughs) i would honestly go to you too um (laughs) for that so that might be you know you are an institution that's known for that Uh, so maybe maybe that's maybe that is part of that uh, yeah yeah, people are choosing you people are Mm -hmm. choosing you for that uh, which is mm-hmm. which is awesome that you have a specialty uh, mm-hmm. in doing in doing that, you know. But yeah, I mean, absolutely. It, yeah, no, it definitely comes down to, and even like, uh, you know, tell a story. But I remember one day, I there was a woman. I had to rebuild her entire bottom. She was fine, but her jaw mm-hmm. was just. She hadn't worn her dentures in twenty years, so her lips mm-hmm. were coming mm-hmm. in. For the life of me, I tried everything. We tried to build them out, but her lips were normally very. She had very thick lips, mm-hmm. so trying to get them out. 
after they had mm-hmm. been curled in for 20 years. <laughs> It just, it just wasn't doing what I wanted it to do. And I, you know, I, 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 I'll tell you, I tried everything. I really did. Um, I'm not one to give up. <laughs> so I, and I finally got some wax and I rebuilt her lower jaw right below the nose. I went right across and I built her jaw, her chin, her mouth, everything. And I, it looked pretty good. It looked just like the photos and built that out. Well, the family that night had, was kissing and they were loving their loved one. And when Mm -hmm. I came in the next morning, cosmetics and all that wax was peeled back like an orange peel. So you could see everything underneath. It was just peeled right back from them. The the wax was sticking to their lips. A little disgusting to my perspective, but it was sticking to their lips. And (laughs) they had had literally, they had cosmetic all over this gasket. It was bad. So, yeah. So I come in the next morning and I'm like, I I called the funeral assistant that night and I was like, um... Why didn't you call me? They're like, yeah. oh, we didn't think we had to. I said, it was nine o'clock at night when everyone left, right? Yeah, okay. I said, and did you check the body like you're supposed to? Yep, I did that. I said, okay. I said, and did you see the mouth peeled back? Yep, I saw that. Okay, did you call me? No, we figured you'd see it in the morning. <laughs> I'm like, oh, no. And I'm like... If I could have seen it an hour earlier in the morning, that might have been right, okay. Right, right. You know, I mean, if I had gotten that call at nine o'clock, I would have gladly, you know, you put the family to sleep, you do whatever you need to kind of deal, right? Mm -hmm. I would have, I was available. Mm -hmm. It was nine o'clock at night. I would have happily jumped. I would have said, let me eat dinner or whatever it is. And I would have jumped in my car. I would have gone there, pulled up a stool. I would have fixed that. I would have had all night to just take my time, make sure it was perfect. And I did that the next morning. I did, I did fix it and it was perfect and nobody would have known Mm -hmm. it ever happened, but I would have appreciated taking my time and just double checking it <laughs> not having to rush uh but mm-hmm. i you know but unfortunately yeah. i had to yeah <laughs> yeah it's the fun of funeral service <laughs> oh. <laughs> always something always something in this profession mm-hmm. keeps 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 us on our toes ain't that the truth <laughs> it, it it's one of the on best it. and worst things about it in my opinion <laughs> <laughs> yeah well, I think it's always a, a shock. I think anybody that enters the profession, I mean, I know we get the students that were already working and, um, you know, those that do it during their schooling and those that mm-hmm. do it after. And I mean, I always see like, I always discourage to some degree my students when they're, if they're not involved in a good place, I'll usually be like, yeah, maybe you should hold off to the end because I do see their grades drop about 10%, like uh, 10 points usually yeah. when they start their apprenticeship. I don't know if that's what you're seeing too. Um, I see so we can't, in Pennsylvania, they have to wait until uh, they're done with the program to start their oh. internship. Oh, good. Yeah. Okay. I yeah. So like that's that. a little different. Yeah. You know what though? I mean, there's benefits both ways. Like I, sometimes when they start their internship first, because our online students are all over the country. Um, they come into it with a little bit more of a baseline mm. knowledge, which is nice. But of course, mm. I mean, they'll learn it. It just, it takes a little bit more time if you've never mm. been in a funeral home, you know, Right. which that was how it was for me. I had never, um, never worked in a funeral home, never seen an embalming anything when I started school. So not to say it's not possible, but um, coming into it with a little bit more knowledge as a baseline is helpful. <laughs> yeah, no, I was the same way. I went through the two years. I didn't work in a funeral home. Uh, I started, at, well, I started my last semester because I had one class left. I had transferred mm-hmm. a lot of classes and I had a micro degree prior. So I transferred course and I had one course left. It was online, which was perfect. I do it in person, but this was mm-hmm. one class that was online at the end. So I mm-hmm. took that. And I started at the funeral home my last semester. But yeah, other than that, I mean, I I was working three jobs. I mm-hmm. was downsizing a company, um, mm-hmm. you know, at the same time. So I had my hands full, yeah. uh, you know, uh, but yep. <laughs> I, was, I had my hands full. But, you know, I definitely see, you know, uh, you know, I think that they should have experience while they're going mm-hmm. through school. I think that it's to have that hands-on experience is vital. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know if it has to necessarily be the employment based mm-hmm. experience because I don't know what you're seeing in Pennsylvania. Uh, but I know that, you know, where I'm seeing, and I'm not saying everywhere, but what mm-hmm. I'm seeing, you know, my fair share here. And I know talking mm-hmm. to our colleagues across the country, you know, they're seeing similar things mm-hmm. uh, where we are seeing more. It's an employee relationship. And like anything mm-hmm. else, if I'm paying you to do something, I'm going to fill your time with stuff that I don't want to do. Sure. Um, <laughs> that's just how it yeah, is. That's, that's, you know, 
it's a struggle. I mean, that's, you know, you don't want to send them out and for a year during their internship, they're washing cars. I mean, right. not to say that they shouldn't, you know, be allowed to do something like that, but if it's nothing else, I mean, you, you know how to wash a car, you know how to run a vacuum, like you need right. to learn funeral service from your internship. So, right. Right. And it should be a gradual thing. Like, I mean, I, I, I can see this beautiful spectrum of, you know, learning and, mm -hmm. you know, again, maybe this is the educators in us, but I can see this gradual thing where, you know, all right, we start off. Yes, you will wash cars. Yes, you will use the vacuum. Yes, you will paint the fence. Yes, you will. You know, you will bring out the trash. But I think part of that is in the beginning. That's your at initially. This is what you do. Because I'm going to basically make you a glorified funeral assistant, mm -hmm. and I'm going to have you do a few of these things because I want you to shadow the funeral assistants to see what – but this is your only first three months. This mm -hmm. is to show you so that you can see how these people – if you're work, if they're working for you, you should know what they're doing outside. Mm-hmm. So that way when I, tell, when I explain to them and say, okay, you're going to park cars, we're going to do it this style – I know what the best style of valet parking these cars is going to be because I've done it. I've stood out there. I know the issues. I know when you're going around. I realize that it was hard to make that corner around the building. I know that when the families come, I know what questions they're asking so I can anticipate that and I can train new people. Yep. I don't mind doing that, but that's something that, okay, the first month you're going to do this, the mm -hmm. second month you're going to start, you know, you know, uh, yeah. doing these small things. We're going to gradually get you away from taking the trash out we're going to gradually get you away from you know washing cars and mm -hmm. washing toilets or whatever mm -hmm. and um you know you're going to be you know doing wherever mm -hmm. we need you but you're going to be in a range you're going to sit in on arrangements okay i'm doing mm -hmm. arrangements you're not doing something else okay i have a removal you can go on that but next one you're sitting on the arrangement mm -hmm. and then we gradually get to that before mm -hmm. you should know it that person a couple months down the line should be doing the demographic information for that arrangement. Yep. Yeah. I mean, you to start from the bottom is great. It's yeah. just the problem is when you keep your intern at the bottom exactly. and they don't learn anything exactly. and then they spent a year wasting their time and they go to another firm and they're like, well, what did you learn? Like, <laughs> what did you learn at this during your internship? Yeah. And, you know, it, so that's, that's the tough part. It is. No, it's and there's only tough. so much we can do to prevent that, you know, it's mm. like, what 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 can you do right our hands are tied we're just give them advice that uh, mm -hmm. you know in our roles and no it is our hands are tied because it is an employment mm -hmm. situation and mm -hmm. you know there should be a it would be nice if that arrangement allowed for again that gradualness of okay this is our plan when you sit down mm -hmm. okay i'm hiring as an apprentice this is the plan this is what we're going to do we're going to have you do you know this for a while and then at this point just so you know this is the point where i'm going to have you coming in on arrangements this mm -hmm. is the point you're going to be doing removals throughout because i want you to get used to working with families out there i'm going to go with you for a while then once you feel comfortable i'm going to send you out on your own so that way um uh, i think that there's value to that to some degree because mm -hmm. if if i am you know your boss and i'm breathing down your throat are you going to speak no yeah. When the family talks, you're going to be like, talk to him. He's the director, mm -hmm. you know, and mm -hmm. you're not going to necessarily have that, you know, all of a sudden you take somebody out of the show and now they're asked questions and they have to answer them, but make sure they have the right answer before mm -hmm. they do that. Make sure they're not mm -hmm. stepping on boundary where they're not giving answers that a director should be giving yeah, or the employer should be giving, but okay, we're, we're going to have this. Now you learn, okay, mm -hmm. we're going to gradually having you. Yeah, mm -hmm. but you're not. Leaving. You almost have to let them step out of their comfort zone on their own because I think when you force them, and you know they're nervous, they don't know the answers. You, you got to let them learn first, and then kind of let them. You know, they'll they'll step out when they're ready to. They'll start answering questions without even realizing that they're stepping out of that like training zone and kind of into their own style of doing things. So yeah. I mean, it's, and it's I important. think. It's Oh, it absolutely is. Absolutely is. And I think a plan is always good too, because I think if the apprentice looks at, you know, looks at their job and says, what the heck? I'm taking mm -hmm. out trash. I'm washing cars. I'm washing toilets. Now, is those valuables? Yes, because mm -hmm. later down the line, when when you need to turn over funerals, 
you can say, you can you can have say, okay, I need all the. There's two funeral directors in the place, or hey, I'm gonna have I'm gonna send somebody out because um, you know maybe they're just delivering things. The family left. I don't have any assistance because the assistants are bringing something. Mm-hmm. So. Yes, I do need to know how to run a vacuum. I'm hoping everyone knows mm-hmm. how to run a vacuum, but I don't take things for granted. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, what happens when you realize that, okay, I have literally 20 minutes to vacuum this entire establishment before another family starts to come in for arrangements. And I got flowers. I got, you know, people had oil on their boots and now I got to shampoo the carpet and get the oil out of there. Oh, I've done that mm-hmm. enough times. <laughs> I have. Um, <laughs> that all of a sudden, how do you know that the... Ex- so you're vacuuming. You're like, oh, oh no, the, the the vacuum cord doesn't reach this way. Okay, I need to plug in here. Well, if I had known that if I could, I know with the system that I can do this quick. If I plug in into this plug and I do this section, then I plug in over here. I do this section. Mm-hmm. I know that I can do this effectively. Otherwise, I'm stepping on myself. So mm-hmm. yeah, there's value to knowing how to do that. Where the value that oh, all of a sudden it's before a funeral. I went down. I ended up in a puddle. I had a funeral <laughs> director that had um. Some I don't know how he managed to do this, but a cement truck was spitting off some cement as he went by it, and he had cement going down the lead car. Oh, no. Oh, my God. Yeah. That's awful. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, but if you run into these situations, does that director know where the, where the, where the, where the, um, you know, wash station is? Mm-hmm. Do they know where the car wash is, rather? Yeah. Um, you know, or do they rely on the assistant? They're like, I don't know where it is. I don't know where the tickets are. You know, I don't know where to, I don't know how to do this. So at least, you know, the process, you know, where to go. And, mm-hmm. you know, I think there's value to that. Or are you doing it in your own, mm-hmm. in your own uh, driveway? But yeah, no, I think it's hard to um, respect and follow leadership too. If you know that they don't really know how to walk the walk, you know, like, exactly. are you just giving directions? Or are you telling me this because you know what works, you know? Right. And I'd rather be the lead. I mean, and there's always that, the difference. I know there's like uh, diff- different images. If you Google like, you know, boss versus leader, you know, what's the difference? And, you know, and the boss is sitting there mushing people with a whip, you know, and telling them, and you got the leader that's like, follow me, boys, let's go. And, you know, and that's, I always think I, I like to be a leader. I'd rather say, let's do this. Okay. You guys get the, fl- you get the arrangements. I'm going to vacuum the carpet. You know, uh, you can wash the toilet because, I'm okay telling you to wash the toilet because you know that I'm going to do the same thing. Mm-hmm. You know that if I had the time, I'm going to do it. So I think, yeah, I, I agree. I think everyone needs to needs to know how to walk that talk. But I think mm-hmm. I think for an employee to be happy, they need a plan. They need to know mm-hmm. that at this milestone, that these are the things to do. And I'm going to determine when you're good at parking cars, then I'll move you on. That's fine. Mm-hmm. So now if I'm not moving on, that means you're not happy with how I park cars. Mm-hmm. Yeah, especially in like smaller firms where, you know, you, you really are expected to do everything. Um, It it can be frustrating when you're not doing any of the funeral stuff, but you're kind of expected to do the, you know, the low man on the totem pole stuff. Um, So it's, it's it's frustrating for them, I think. No, it is. I I think it's very frustrating. And I think it's, you know, same thing as like, I mean, when you're in those small firms, Mm -hmm. I mean, yes, you are going to do the the low end work. Why? Because somebody mm-hmm. has to do it. And if mm-hmm. the director is busy embalming and the, uh, the embalmer's busy embalming and the director's mm-hmm. busy doing arrangements and maybe it's the same person, mm-hmm. they're the skilled, they're the skilled worker. They're the ones that yep. are licensed. So right. they're not, they're not going to wash that thing is too. They're not going to be washing the cars and taking out the garbage when they have you. And they're the right. licensee. They're going to do the licensee work. And mm-hmm. then you brought, you get brought in to do that work. Right. When, when they need the help um, doing mm-hmm. it. Um, and I think that's what a lot of people maybe don't realize. The apprentice doesn't realize like, Hey, I'm doing this work because somebody has to, but yeah, it's a fine line. Yeah. <laughs> right. But I think it's also like, if you're going to get an assistant to do those, some of those things mm-hmm. and then, you know, I'm sure they would be happy to take the money. They're, they're mm-hmm. happy to get They're happy to get a paycheck. Mm-hmm. And then at least you can say, Hey, I know you've been bringing out the trash a lot. I know you've been washing cars a lot. I appreciate that. I know you're here to learn. Mm-hmm. I'm going to have somebody else do that. I'm going to bring you downstairs and I do want you to learn how to mm-hmm. do this. I want you to, you know, do that. And I think some of the value when embalming is to leave people alone. Mm-hmm. Okay. I'm going to show you how to do this. Okay. I want you to aspirate. I'm going to go, I'm going to go write an obituary. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think sometimes you're, when you're breathing down their neck, it's like, they're, they're too nervous to do anything. Yeah. That's, I mean, as 
in the prep room with the students, like when they're looking for an artery, I'm, I'm stepping back. I'm going to go grab the next thing that we need. You find the artery. You're not going to yeah. mess anything up. It's all right. Find right. the artery. Right. Nine times out of 10, they find it way faster than when I'm standing there watching them. Right. <clears throat> I always told them to slow down too. Cause I always notice mm-hmm. the students, they always, you know, they're in a rush mm-hmm. and I'm like, I always tell them the first thing when they first start up in my prep room, I said, slow. Mm-hmm. I said, if anybody rushes, <laughs> I'm going to take you away from this. I'm taking you away and you can, you, you come back later. You're not, so I'm going to give somebody else that artery to find if you try to rush. Mm-hmm. And they're like, why? I said, you're about to turn, you're about to like destroy everything in its path, the way you're mm-hmm. searching to the point mm-hmm. that you're now trying to find a needle in a haystack. Right. You're ripped apart than, every muscle that's your, your guides and limits. Like you're not going to find exactly. anything now. <laughs> right. You're it's, just hope and a prayer. <laughs> right. Go in, separate the muscles. Find yeah. the fascia. Separate the fascia. Find, it's like, oh my goodness, you guys are literally just chopping away at something, and now you're wondering why you have no clue what you're feeling for. Oh, yeah. Um, slow, I have slow, them for the guides yeah. and limits, so I will quiz them before they start raising arteries. I'm like, all right, what are yeah. we looking for in here? Because you're not just going to go going crazy and, you know, yeah. rip every vein open so that I have a mess to clean up later. I mean, <laughs> exactly. I yeah, wonder. think this through. <laughs> and if you turn into mush, I'm going to make you stand there and try to find it because you're not giving up on it. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> you know, that's, no, that's your problem. Yeah. But they do. They want to show off to their, you know, friends yeah. and things like that. I'm like, there's no showing off in my prep room. <laughs> no showing off in my prep room. Yeah. Like we're going to do things right. <laughs> we will. No. no, screw up. That's okay, but it's not going to be because you're trying to get out of here faster. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I think that's the one advice I could give to students: slow down. You mm-hmm. know, it's like there's not there's not a rush. You know, yep. and I think a mm-hmm. lot of them are. You know, I think that there's a lot of confusion. I mean, I think that like anything else, they're confused and they're not going to necessarily, mm-hmm. you know, uh, you know, admit to it. I think that they're, you know, I mean. We and we're teaching theory in school, and it's like, oh, what is this? Well, this is a humectant, and this is a mm-hmm. desiccant, and this is surfactants, and this mm-hmm. is, and they're like, okay, and then you send them out, and they're like, all right, what chemicals do I grab? And they're looking at the shelf, going, none of this has surfactant on it. <laughs> You're right, because surfactant is an right. ingredient in that. So I always tell them, I said, read you the bottle, <laughs> read the bottle, right? And I'm like, I'm like, you guys know what's in Italian spice in your kitchen? They're like, oh, oregano, sage. I'm like, okay, exactly. Mm-hmm. It's like, like how do you these... know this, Miss Kush? I'm like, I read the bottle. I've never used this fluid in my life. I <laughs> just, you right. just have to read the bottle. It's okay. <laughs> right. Or I looked up the SDS, or I looked right. up the, you know, I found the, yeah. I found the catalog for the manufacturer, right. and I, you know, read <laughs> about what this is about, you know, yeah. and. <laughs> you know, this is for trauma. That means it's going to have these in it and stuff. But I always tell them, I'm like, it's like your spice cabinet. You're not looking for oregano on the shelf. You're not mm-hmm. looking for sage. You're looking for the Italian seasoning that's going to give you all of it yep. in one. Um, and that's, you know, that's what we what we that's, have. So I tell them in class, it's uh, it's ice cream. It's your toppings on your ice cream oh. and your arterial is your ice cream. <laughs> I like that. I like that. I like that analogy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, no, I do. I like that. Whatever it takes, you know. <laughs> Whatever it takes. I think that that's the thing is whatever it takes to com- to reduce the confusion, mm-hmm. you know, and them. I think, you know, we do throw a lot at them and I think, uh, oh, yeah. you it's, know, it's intense. It definitely is intense, um, yeah. especially on the science end of things. Sometimes I think it's, yeah. it, it's not the easiest thing to, to grasp. So right. if I have to start by talking about ice cream, then that's okay. <laughs> right. Right. I mean, I think it's maybe a little under, you know. Uh, maybe it's a little easier to understand. So like, throw this religion, a casket goes this way or a casket goes that way. Mm-hmm. I think everyone can picture an mm-hmm. aisle in a church or a temple, and they can picture the casket going somewhere. Right. Um, they can picture the fact that you get someone dressed. They can picture what plastics mm-hmm. are. They can picture all these things. And I think then we get to the yeah. chemicals, and it's just like picturing a formaldehyde molecule is maybe a little bit different. <laughs> right. I went to this clinical site, and right. they had, you know, this manufacturer. I go to this one, and they're using two different other ones. Mm-hmm. Um, I have no clue what, what's going on here, you know, and, yeah. you know, it's like, well, yeah, they gave him a fancy name, you know, and yeah. it's like, hey, trauma was in the name. At least I know what that, edema is somewhat blended in the name. I know what that's for, but, 
Right. Um, just not the, you know. Yeah. Hey, let's call uh, a chemical uh, something weird and like right. assume people uh, know what you the know. heck that is, you know. You do <laughs> wish sometimes they would be a little more straightforward. It would make our job easier. But oh, what I, can you do? I, <laughs> you know, I, I do. I want. I, I do really do. I wish that they could be straightforward. And I want to get all the chemical manufacturers mm-hmm. on this on this podcast, and right. I want to have. Yeah. I want to have a debate. I want to know why these these. Come right. name such weird things. Love the creativity, but like, can we at least <laughs> list a little bit more under the creative name? <laughs> right, exactly. You know, right. I mean, unless you, unless you use it, it would be, you know, um, right. You know, you're not a, uh, not very familiar. And I think I can mm-hmm. see that very hard for students coming out not knowing. Absolutely. That, yeah. You know. Oh yeah. I mean, it, it, you know. it's it's tough. They don't know. They're looking at the words that we understand for the first time. It's like they're just trying to process what humectant means and right. to make a humectant and then call it something else. And, you know, for us, maybe that's okay. But when you're learning, it's, that's, it's hard to learn that way. Oh yeah. Or well, they're taking words that similar, like surfactant, you mm-hmm. know, I mean, mm-hmm. an explainer, right, look, we're breaking down the barrier on the water, you know, water molecule, we're allowing things to penetrate. I'm like, it's getting through the surface of the cell, <laughs> surfactant, surface of the cell. And then what do I do? I put the quiz and I always know to put the, you know, you always put that answer that you know that's going to trip them up. But they, you know, they always choose or like my quizzes for embalming are open-ended. Mm-hmm. My students hate that, but you know what? They learn because um, yeah. they have to actually know the answer. There is no guessing here. They actually have to know the answer. Yeah. And Every single time they fill in that blank that said, what is a surfactant? Mm -hmm. And they fill in the open-ended blank that says topical embalming. No, no, it is not topical. This is Mm -hmm. not. And they're like, well, it said surfactant, surface of the body. No, no, no. (laughs) No, that's not what I told you. (laughs) That's not what I told you. And and it's gotten to the point that in my class, I actually say specifically, this is not topical. <laughs> this is not surface, sur- you know, surface mm-hmm. level of the body. This is this. Okay. Mm-hmm. You are going to see this on your quizzes and your exams. This is the answer. This is not the answer. Everybody repeat after me that this is not the answer. <laughs> right. It, it, sure enough. Yeah. They give it as the answer on the exam. <laughs> you know, sure enough. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, every time. Every time. <laughs> Every time. I don't know. What are we going to do with them? I don't know. What are we going to do? Well, yeah. it has been fun having you on the on the podcast. Yeah. Um, <laughs> pleasure. We'll have to have you back. More dynamic Anytime. conversations. Anytime. Yeah. We'll have you. We'll have you back. We can complain about food manufacturers. You know, whatever. <laughs> we'll bring you on when I get them on here. We're, we're, we're gonna. Yeah. We're gonna have you on to argue and we'll and bully debate. them. Yeah, we'll bully them into uh, into why their 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 chemicals are not named correctly. Absolutely, <laughs> that I can do. Uh, I, I can do that too. <laughs> well, it's been a pleasure. Thank you for listening to this episode of Mortuary Mayhem. For links to information discussed during this episode, please visit the website at www.mortuarymayhem.com. Do you have questions, comments, suggestions for topics, or want to be a guest on the show? Email us at podcast at mortuarymayhem.com. We should do this again sometime. qualify to go to funeral college for free a ranger training is also coming to massachusetts on september 29th 2023 for both opportunities visit mortuarymayhem.com